Hello and welcome to this episode of the Mary Jess Meets podcast. Today I will be chatting to Siobhan McAleese. Siobhan has been involved with music all her life with choirs and musical theatre roles, but only recently began vocal training again as a therapeutic way of coping with a new diagnosis of secondary Addison's disease after a benign tumour was found on her pituitary gland. Following surgery to remove the tumour, Siobhan's recovery is going from strength to strength, mirroring that of her musical journey. Her latest single, Nella Fantasia, was released in aid of Mental Health Ireland and the Pituitary Foundation Ireland, and the music video is meant to portray a message of hope for anyone who is struggling and to show that you can achieve anything you set out to accomplish if you work hard at it. She is so inspiring and has such an incredible story. So let's meet on the Mary Just Meets podcast, Siobhan McAleese. Hello, Siobhan McAleese, and welcome to the Mary Just Meets podcast. Hello, Mary Jess. Thank you so much for having me. Delighted to be here with you today. I'm delighted that you're here. Thank you so much for making time in your very busy schedule to come and talk to us. I've just so enjoyed our little voice messages going backwards and forwards on Messenger. So now being able to chat to you is just so lovely. So what have you been up to today? I actually have been uh, I have been at work, <laughs> working from home. Um, I'm glad to say my day is finished now in terms of my my day job. So, um, yeah, I get to sit now and chill and chat with you, which is great. So <laughs> kick them back. Yeah, we get to relax and have a nice chat um, and talk about all kinds of things. I've got so many questions that I can't wait to ask you. Um, but I feel it's important that we just touch on the fact that you've got a day job because I just think it's so important. People who have listened to this podcast for a while now will know that one of the mottos I was blessed with growing up was that you must always have one more string to your bow. You must have more than one string to your bow. So having a day job as well as the music, that is your second string and it's just so important. So what is that? Okay, well, wait for this one now. So um, (laughs) totally different from, um, you know, the music side. So I'm actually a payments manager uh, for a utility company here in in Ireland, um, and I'm the national uh, manager. So I make sure that when customers are paying their bills, that it's sitting on their account and everything is hunky dory. Um, So yeah, dealing with many millions of euro every day and that's my responsibility so uh yeah uh, i have been i suppose going back if i bring it back a step or two like i would have studied music and maths in um ny Maynooth in in ireland for my degree and then i went on and i did a higher diploma in communications and broadcasting as well in Maynooth and i didn't really know what i wanted to do with my life i still think i'm like that a little bit and uh i ended up um doing a summer job for i think it was eight or ten weeks in the local county council in Meath here where where i'm from and from there it was like I just sort of ended up getting a job and I stayed on and I worked my way up and I'm still sort of trying to figure out what am I going to do with my life and 11 years later I was still working there and then opportunity came up to work in the utility company and uh, I I took that step and um, I'm with the company now since 2014 so um, yeah and the music is all now coming I suppose bubbling up as well on the side which is fantastic yeah yeah that's really fantastic I mean firstly what a lot of responsibility holy moly when you're talking about like millions of euros and my face went oh that's quite a responsibility (gasps) Uh, (laughs) but um the other thing I thought was I just I love how you did a dual honors degree I completely love that. Um, I mean, that's probably, I'm a little bit biased because I did a dual honours degree as well. I did music and Chinese, making sure that I had my second string to my bow and my first string put together. And so I think it's wonderful that you did a dual honours. That is something that I say to people who are looking at pursuing music. I say, well, can you have your second string as that dual honours? Because then you can go to university and make sure that you're pursuing both your passions. Um, And you've got so many more options available to you afterwards, which you've proved. I mean, look at the responsibility that you've got now alongside your music. That's amazing. 
Oh, thank you. I just think um, like hard work will get you places as well. Like, um, and I've been I've been blessed as well. I suppose my parents would have maybe instilled in me, you know, growing up, it's would be a good idea to go on and go to university if I, if I could. And like I say, I didn't know. I never knew what I wanted to do with my life. Uh, but I knew music and maths were always my favorite subjects in school. So I was like, right, well why not take them on to university and, and just play it out and see what happens. And yeah, but just hard work, it does pay off, you know, and, and here I am and this is the position I'm in. So I feel very, very lucky. I do. Yeah. And I, I know what you mean about the hard work paying off. I've, I've always thought about that with um, Chinese because it's, I, I'm not a natural at languages. Like I was horrible at French. <laughs> it's really bad at French. Um, so I don't consider myself a natural language learner. But when you love something, that's then when you're willing to put that hard work in. And I think that's why I really felt like I blossomed with Chinese because I loved it so much that I just wanted to spend all the live long day learning it. Um, and that's where the hard work doesn't feel like hard work, does it? Because you're doing something that you really love. Absolutely, yeah, 100% agree with you. Um, and probably it's only really, I really got the sense of that with my music. Um, only in the last number of years, like I, I, I would have lost music in my life probably realized um after like four years I was not doing much with my music like so I, I played the piano and I would have always sang and sang in choirs and in you know in school and um with the council actually they had a, a, a council choir and I sung at that and I was involved in the local musical society here in Trim over the years um but I was working a lot as well and my my daughter Maisie she had just been born and I was doing a commute up and down to Dublin I was an hour and a half each way so I probably didn't realize like I, I hadn't the time either do you know but it was only when um, I fell quite ill after my second child Dylan was born I realized I was like oh my goodness music where where's music like I felt like my arm was gone almost like a part of me was missing and I was lying in my bed one day and like just after finding out that I was um, needing to go on steroids and I didn't even know for how long and I'll go back over all that in a second but it, it was the it was the the moment the turning point in my life um, where I was like right if I get anyway energized from these steroids if they can make me feel any better I am going to turn this around and bring music back into my life and that I, I'd always promised myself that I would get my voice trained um but I never actually took the step you know the way you promise yourself stuff and you don't do it and I'm a devil for that and uh that was it I was like right I'm still I'm not going to put this off any longer and I'm just going to do it and that's what that was the point that um started me on my journey of where I am now I guess gosh I've got so many questions I want to ask you from all of that I just <laughs> um I feel like when you've got music inside you so much it does feel like you're missing a part of you when you haven't been able to enjoy that part of you for so long um and so it sounds like it was something that came to you when you came to you again when you really needed it most as kind of like a healing a healing that could come through something that you were already felt like you were so close to um so i think maybe if we start if we start from the beginning and go through why music is so important to you and how you got into it and your love of music um and then if you're happy to share with us how it helped you through a really difficult time um if you're happy to go through from the beginning and help us help us through your story then i'd love to hear your story of course yeah no problem um so i feel like i've always had music music has always been in my life like it's in the family um, my my mother is musical. She would sing. Um, my my aunt Isha O'Donovan is probably we would look at her as like we I respect her so much. She um, lives in Dublin, but she would have set up the Dublin Choral Foundation, which is made up of 
two choirs, the Lasso Scholars and the Piccolo Lasso, and also um, a professional choir. And she has brought these choirs um, sung for the Pope and she would put on um, like concerts every year in the National Concert Hall in Dublin. And it's a big family occasion where we go and we support and we're so proud because what she does, she conducts as well. So she's conducting her choirs and she's conducting an orchestra um, up on stage. And like, I'm always so, you know, I, ca I can't get over what she does. So um, we've always grown up with, with music around us. And I guess I would have, uh, you know, done piano lessons when I grew up all the way through school as I say music was my favorite subject and um I yeah I did piano right up until the one past grade eight which is senior certificate and I've just I never finished out the diploma um it was when I was in college I I, I suppose the college exams got in the way a little bit but it's one thing I will like here we go again I'm promising I will go back but I will <laughs> And um, yeah, and then it was like an, the natural course of for going to college was picking the subject. So I've, I've always been involved with music. You know, it's always been there. It's in the family. And then, um, as I say, I've, it's only from probably getting my voice trained. It's really, really opened it up. Like it's like what I've had inside me is coming finally out the way I've I've thought about it, but I was never able to portray it. Um, and now it's, it's, I feel like I've matured to the stage where I know what, what way it has to be for me to know that I'm comfortable with it and that I'm of also confident with it as well and confident to share it out, do you know? Yeah, I do, absolutely. I find it really interesting how you've said here I go again, I'm saying, I'm saying I'm going to do something. Uh, but I've really found that in my life, as soon as I say, I'm going to do this, and I say it out loud, then you almost hold yourself more accountable to that. Um, and it sounds incredible what you managed to achieve with your piano. So you want to go back and finish the qualification above grade eight at some point. I mean, goodness me, that is, that is, <laughs> you must be amazing at piano. Well, I again, piano is like the, the voice with sitting down and practicing and the muscle memory and all of that. So it is about finding the time to do that, um, which I, again, with job and children, I don't always have that time. So but what I do love to do is go back over old pieces and like I would have been able to play them all the way through, obviously, for exams, for example, on the grade eight or senior certificate certificate exams. And um, like I know I was able to play them all the way through. So when I sit down now, it's like I get to a certain point and I know, well, that's going to need a good bit of work. So it does it. it take, you have to be committed and and give it the attention it needs. And, you know, sitting down maybe for half an hour, an hour every evening. And um, so, yeah, I do that a lot at the weekends. I mightn't get much time during the week but certainly like my piano is just over there so I keep sort of looking at it and um I just love I love sitting at the piano I absolutely and I just love whatever comes out as well do you know I just um sort of whatever's in here will pour out and um yeah I I, I, I just like to share that as well so I, I've just started a few bits like recording myself and just posting them on my social media and just seeing maybe what the reaction is so it's lovely it's lovely to do wow it, it really sounds like you're at the same position with your piano playing as you are with your voice because you said you like to sit down at the piano and and feel free for whatever the inspiration comes out um and you've said that with your singing now as well you feel like that's been let loose that's almost more free now um because you've been having lessons now I know that you've been having lessons with somebody quite amazing haven't you would you tell us about that oh stuff I still like pinch myself to go oh, how, how like so yeah I currently am studying voice under Deirdre Shannon um or Deirdre Gilsonen as as is her family name but she's known on the stage as Deirdre Shannon and Deirdre was one of one of the first members of Celtic Woman um so she has like a like huge career behind her and I, I just 
like again I went to, I went to my aunt my aunt Ita and I was like um should I come to Dublin because I live in I live an hour an hour and a half from Dublin should I come to Dublin and she's like I don't know if you should be coming up and down that's a lot for you and she was like what about the Gilsmans don't they live in Meath and I was like okay and she's like try try them and uh I reached out to Deirdre by email and she wouldn't have known me for from Adam and um I just told her that I was looking for voice lessons and would she be in a position and she came back instantly and she said yeah love to meet you and I met her and we we instantly connected instantly and it's just been a hit from there um and I just I just feel like she has done so much for me like and yeah it just explains it so well I really understand now the whole you know how important it is to do all that you need to do to to be able to sing in you know in a controlled manner I guess. Yeah there's so much to it that I didn't realize until I started studying the Joa Still technique where it does show you your instrument you're actually shown this is what it looks like <laughs> um, and the biology of the voice and it's so fascinating because I've always thought like so many other instrumentalists you, you've got a guitar you can see what it looks like you can see your instrument you've got a piano you know what that looks like with your voice you can't see it so as soon as I was shown a diagram of the larynx and all of the muscles that go into helping the control your voice I thought gosh it's such a sophisticated amazing instrument and it felt so eye-opening um to actually be able to see it for the first time and understand all of that absolutely I couldn't agree more with you um like I only only in what when I started doing my lessons like for about I'd say six months to a year I thought um we had like multiple vocal cords I didn't realize there was only two like that's how so far removed I am from understanding or was understanding the voice and I'm just still amazed because it's like again I'm only sort of two years into it now but I, it's like you you keep unlocking bits of your voice like and you realize oh my goodness I'm now able to to do that or I can reach that or that's sounding um, that that note there sitting there is is much smoother and nicer sounding than it was before and um, yeah or you're able to control and breathe longer for phrases and yeah it's it's all and I'm, I'm just feeling it you know whether you're in your voice head or your chest and um, voice all those things I, I just I'm still amazed by it and I'm just I love that I'm constantly learning and I know there's, there's so much more and I can't wait to sort of do what you're doing and look more into it like I've gone to a few talks and stuff just to get that whole thing about learning about what's inside and you know how different things can affect you on a day-to-day -day basis that you'd never think of and um, and yeah I'm fascinated by it too yeah I, I'm so glad that you are because I just completely share your passion with it I do <laughs> um, and knowing what is going on in your voice and what affects it and it's so it's so like training your muscles isn't it it's like um if you want to train to do a particular sporting event you've got to put in the specific training for that it's very much like that with the voice and so when you are training it specifically to be able to sing the songs that you want to be able to sing um you're training those muscles you're strengthening those muscles but it is a gradual thing so it's really nice when you get that feeling of oh that note is sitting in a nicer place now you go oh my hard work's paying off because you can hear the differences do you know what i mean absolutely yeah no and, and that's it I'm like I, I like I would run around now going yes I got up to that note and um like recently I would have like like I hit a, a B flat a high B flat and I'm I like what I'm doing is I'm aiming for the C I'm aiming for the C and hopefully I'll maybe even get a little bit higher but even just finally like I was like oh and it sounds decent enough do you know it's obviously not perfect but I like I put it out there on social media again like I wasn't afraid to do it and um yeah it just shows I suppose how far maybe I've come uh, with my whole my vocal journey as well as the music journey yeah absolutely and I, I know exactly what you're saying because I've had moments like that with my voice where I've just been going around the house celebrating <laughs> I did it 
<laughs> so I know exactly what you mean there. But the passion that you're talking about your singing with, you can completely see why even though you had to focus on your family, you had to focus on your other string to your bow and your job, how that passion just stayed with you. And it came to you at the point again when you needed it most. And I can completely understand why now I hear you talk about it with such passion, why it stayed there and why it was then there for you when you needed it. Oh yeah, so again, the time that I probably, like, and, and how it's really helped me, it's like, so if I go back a bit, um, when, after, after Maisie was born, so, I discovered like I breastfed her for six months. I'll go into a little bit of detail, but I breastfed her for six months. And um, after I stopped, realized about a year later, I was still able to produce milk. And like that shouldn't be happening. Like normally, you know, you that would all be gone. And um, I went to my doctor to find out what was going on. And we took got bloods taken. And it showed a high level of prolactin in my bloods and said, right, well, we need to see what that is. So off to uh, Beaumont Hospital and um, had to see an endocrinologist. And from there, it was an MRI scan and it showed that I had a tumor in my pituitary gland, which is behind your eyes. So if you were sort of to slice your head open, it'd be where your ears are. And it hangs off a stalk that's on your brain, attached to your brain. And it's like the mother mothership to your hormones and your adrenal signals. Um, so hearing that news and seeing um, an MRI, very scary and daunting, but they did say it's not cancerous. It's the best tumor you could have. And these are your options. So options were have uh, surgery to remove it, do nothing and just see, or go on medication and see what I fall pregnant again, because there was no knowing if I was even fertile. Um, so again, that when you hear those words, you're like, oh gosh, like is that the end of the family journey? So um, at the time it was only a one centimeter diameter, so quite small, but still one centimeter when it's in there, <laughs> it's still a lot. Um, so myself and my hubby decided we'd go or I'd go on the med medication to see would I fall pregnant. And a year later, little miracle, uh, I fell pregnant with Dylan and had him in 2018, in October 2018. And um, everything was hunky dory all the way through the pregnancy, but they were keeping a close eye because they said could grow. And um, we have to check your eyes and make sure, you know, you're not getting any blurred vision. And all that was fine until about a month before Dylan was born. And then I could definitely feel something was not right. I, I was getting blurred vision in my left eye. I uh, was really, really tired, like, like way more tired than I was with Maisie, but putting it down to second pregnancy, a little bit older, all that type of thing. And I knew I just needed to, I suppose, deliver Dylan in a month's time and I would have an MRI on the far side of delivery. So got through delivery, Dylan totally perfect, bundle of joy. And he was born in October and had my MRI the following month. And it showed that the tumor had grown to two and a half centimeters. And it was now impacting on loads of different things. So yeah, they could see it in my eye, how it was protruding on the optic area. And then they had to do all these tests for the next six months to find out what actually was it causing. Um, because my uh, like levels of, uh, like I couldn't, I couldn't stay awake during the day. I was falling asleep. I needed to sleep when Dylan was asleep always. I was drinking like three liters of water a day and um, my, my, my skin, you know, when you get out of the bath and you have those like, you know, you've been in the bath too long. I'd get that like after an hour of being up and wonder what what is happening to me. Um, and so it's just weird and wonderful things. So all these tests happened and they discovered that I had secondary Addison's disease. So a uh, very rare disease, one in 10,000 have Addison's um, and what it means is that where your adrenal glands are uh, which send signals to produce cortisol to give you energy um, 
and also for stress, uh, it could be cortisol for stress, that wasn't happening for me. So the signal from my pituitary gland was not going to the adrenal gland. So it's called secondary addisons, whereas primary addisons is if your adrenal glands are not working at all. Um, so on top of that, <laughs> I know I'm going on here a bit, but on top of that, um, my hormones had gone rock bottom. So I had to go on hormone replacements um, and my thyroid uh, as well wasn't functioning. So I had to go on thyroid medication. And then for the um, secondary addisons, I had to go on steroids twice a day and I had to carry around um, an injection, an emergency injection daily um, for fear of I could collapse if stress levels became too much. So that was sort of with a little baby at home. And um, yeah, it was it wasn't a pleasurable time whatsoever. Um, mm -hmm. I look back now and I do wonder how on earth I got through it, but I think because I'm a strong person, um, it, it, it kept me going. And I have a strong network of support around me. Like I have a child minder as well, which helped with Maisie. And then my family aren't too far from me either. And of course my husband as well, Matt. Um, yeah, so it really was from, I suppose that point that having come through all that, I and I knew music was missing from my life and it really puts into perspective the important things in your life like your family your close friends and um, music was another thing and I just said I I didn't know if I was going to get better at that stage I didn't know and um, and I was like right if I can feel anything to get a sort of energy to get the lessons the vocal lessons I'm not putting that off I'm going to do that and that's how that happened and then I suppose to to come around the far side of it then I needed surgery because of it intruding in my eye and there was a fear that I could go blind if it grew any bigger I know oh my gosh um so Shalom. it was like yeah um I was booked in then for surgery um a year after Dylan was born and I was in for four or five days in Beaumont um which deals with all head injuries and like the surgery was completely fantastic it you know they removed it surgeon was so happy with how it all went and um i've i've been making uh, like just recover recovery all last year from that and off steroids I'm no longer i'm on hormone replacement i'm only needing thyroid medication and there's nothing left in terms of the the tumor um, and my pituitary gland there's a little bit of tissue left in it so it's healing it's starting to heal they weren't sure but it is healing so like my energy levels are back and there are days I can feel dips but where I was to where I am now chalk and cheese and I'm just I'm so appreciative of any little thing now that comes my way in terms of the music and it's my it, it, the music for me was the whole way through that was what I think spurred me on every day to keep going keep going keep going and um, and that's where like Deirdre has come in as well and then yeah like little things like the songbirds and um, you know group that I was asked to sing along in as well or sing with and do concerts with like those little things and now chatting with you like you know, I would never, ever have thought that those things would have come down my path in life, do you know? So, yeah, it's, it's been some journey and like, I just feel it's just starting now from all of that. Goodness me, I just, my mind has been blown by your bravery because you, you kindly sent through some notes before we recorded this podcast. So I read a bit about your story um, and it's, incredibly inspiring to read it but to hear you telling your story with such oh gosh candid emotion I just oh my gosh I can't believe how brave you are you're such a strong woman you are such an inspiration oh, and goodness. like you saying to <laughs> saying that you you couldn't get stressed because that had an adverse reaction yet you had a new baby at home and all of this stuff going on and the potential of losing your sight 
how how did you not be stressed by that I just I don't know how I would have coped you're such a I, I was believe you and me I was definitely stressed there were days I was in tears like many days I was in tears I didn't know what to do um, no. and like my my I would I, I I thought I could deal with it myself at home and um, I, I I got to the point where like family or friends were like, I just want to think you need now need to maybe see your doctor and just talk to her about this because this doesn't feel like normal. So uh, to see you so upset, you know, and went and spoke to her and yeah, my basically like my body just wasn't able to uh, to deal with all the emotion of it all. Do you know it was uh, so it, it, it like it was a tough tough time, but it was it was sort of. Once I had the surgery, and again, if it, if if I'd have known then what I sort of was up against, even post surgery, like I I lost the sense of smell and taste for two months. So you lose sensory elements of you as well, and you like it just it brings you back, like it really defines you as a person, and just like it has, it's changed me. It definitely has changed me, and I just I just don't take anything for granted and just as I say anything that comes my way I'm just so appreciative of it and will will wrap my arms around it and and uh, do what I can and just want to yeah I suppose I've shared my story as well that's another thing I have shared my story and that was um, not planned um, it was probably because after after training with Deirdre for the guts of a year, she said, I think it's time that your family and friends heard you and hear what you, you've been up to and uh, maybe put it out there on, you know, on a social media platform. And that's what spurred me on to start my Facebook page. And I put up Omeo Babino Caro, uh, recorded it at home. And I, and, and I had such a reaction from it and nobody knew I was sick at this stage. Oh. So I was getting a beautiful reaction based off just hearing my music, I guess, or my voice. And I got contacted by a local uh, radio station, LMFM, who wanted to know a little bit more about why I had a banner about saying it had been four years since I was on, on a stage. And they were like, well, why is that? You know, and we're hearing your music and um, will you come on and, and speak to us? And uh, it was from that that I ended up a week later sharing my story and it's sort of gone from there and yeah that it, it, every little step sort of happened and then that would make me think well how how could I help people here and that's sort of how the next things happen in terms of releasing music onto Spotify so it's just been like nothing sort of planned but it, it's sort of it's nicely organically happening which I love and in my sort of at my pace as well you know yeah absolutely oh my gosh I just can't I can't get over how I mean you use the word miracle with your little in um but I can't help but feel that you're a little miracle as well <laughs> like talk about everything that you've been through and I mean your pituitary gland now you've said is growing back that sounds miraculous as it is um but then for you to come out the other side of that so recovered so healthy now and pursuing your dream of music is just it sounds miraculous what you've been able to achieve it does thank you that's it's so nice but I, like again I just I do feel like it must have happened for like there's a reason for it and I just always try to take the positives out of out of things my glass is always half full <laughs> so um yeah I, I in a way I look back and I like I'm thankful for it because again it's just it's it's just it's put things really really into perspective you know really um and 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 like because I can be a little bit like I think as a creative person you sort of you know you, you're doing little bits here and little bits there and um it's just given me this sort of goal of look this is actually I can do this and I like I proved it to myself I could do it you know and with that then comes all these lovely little opportunities and you keep growing and you're pushing yourself out of your comfort zone and um yeah I 
I'm, I'm so thankful I've done that. I've so, because I, I was like, will I tell people like, God, what's that going to be like, you know, sharing this on, on, on radio and um, then in, in, in national newspapers and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, and here I am, here I am. So. Wow, you're so brave and sharing your story is such an inspiring story. But when it's something that has happened to you, sharing it is, is scary, isn't it? It's a really brave thing to do. Um, I can imagine going into the radio station and them asking you, so why has it been a four year break? I don't think they would expect a story so dramatic um, and so inspiring. What was their reaction? I, do you know, I um, like it was only like a 10 minute sort of slot. And I realized like I probably, you know, I d you don't feel like you've enough time maybe to go into the full detail of it, you know. Yeah. Um, but you're just trying to get maybe the main points. But yeah, like just like your reaction and um, the same, couldn't quite get over it. And um, just yeah, delighted to hear that I'm doing so well. And then, you know, they're next thing you know, they're they're playing your music as well so it's like it's really it's just like it's it's all these little pinch me moments and it's just 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 again to sort of show um anyone out there that you know you can if you really work hard at something and you believe that you can do you can do it and go for it and nothing stopping me stopping you and i'm i'm an example of that and i'm hoping that i can inspire others to do the same Wow. Well, you're certainly inspiring me um, and you're helping me put things into perspective as well, because before we started recording, I was moaning at you going, oh, it's been one of them days. And now I've heard your story. It's just put into perspective how actually I don't need to worry about those things I was worried about. before. <laughs> so you're helping me already, Siobhan. <laughs> I'm glad I'm helping you. But again, we all have it's all it's all relative in our own little in our own worlds as to, you know, things can get on top of us. So don't ever feel that yours is any different to how I feel you know it's it's relative to you so um if you know when you're everyone goes through their their days and it's we sometimes have tough days and yeah no yeah I, I know what you mean but still yours uh, honestly <laughs> oh my gosh it's just so miraculous how you've been able to get through something like that and so positively as well I mean what a phenomenal example you're setting to your children like you can you can say to them you can get through anything you work hard and you believe that you can and you're an example of that to your kids that's just amazing yeah I'm, and I'm I'm so proud of them as well like Maisie is six now and Dylan is almost three and they're they're just they're they're just brilliant kids and um I just I'm so proud like just to see them and like like that I'm just now really only have only like in the last month or two sort of told Maisie you know get showed her a picture of me lying in the hospital bed and told her that I had had surgery because she'd hear me talking but she'd often probably be what is mommy talking about and you know I, I never explained it to her and I didn't want her to be fearful of like you know this is a secret or anything because it wasn't but I wanted her to be old enough to understand and not scare her either so she's definitely um yeah she understands it fully now and uh, just in the sense of I, I you know I had to go and have have an operation and this is why I take this medication in the morning you know and nothing for her to to be afraid of or anything like that and so she, when she sees me now running around after her in the house she knows there's there's nothing wrong with mommy do you know mommy's fine <laughs> so oh Oh my gosh, what an amazing little girl. And I, I, I know that from my mum, uh, I learned a lot based on her example. Um, and it, it wasn't really the things that she said, it was more the things that she did. Um, and so I imagine them seeing you pursuing your passion of music and going after your dreams there and it growing organically so beautifully. And I know that like based on what I saw with my mum, that's going to have such a great impact on them because they're going to see you achieving when you put the hard work in and think, well, that's how I achieve things as well. And what a great example to set to them. So yes, I, I can't wait to see what your little ones <laughs> end up going on to do. Um, do they play any instruments as well? Are they musical? Definitely musical. They, do you know, I have to, I keep saying, must start Maisie on the piano, do you know? Um, 
and she, well, we're always singing. So I'm, I'm already starting to sort of go, no, I'm like that. Try this instead, you know. But um, I want to do it in a playful way that she doesn't go, oh, God, not again. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, no, we're, we're always singing around the house, uh, you know, all of the time. And they come in and if I'm playing the piano, they're like, Dylan's up on my knee and he's, you know, just that interaction with the instruments. And then, like, you can see there's a guitar beside me here. So... I would have thought myself the guitar years ago, like I'm not a player of the guitar, I'll hold my hands up to that, but just even strumming a few, you know, chords on the guitar and just, just letting them play with instruments and just enjoying them. And, uh, but look, I, I can definitely see the, the music is in them. They, they can hold notes. So um, yeah, I, I let it blossom, you know, and definitely I think that, yeah, give, the, give them the, the, few piano lessons as well as we go on definitely because it really has helped me as well yeah gosh it's such a musical family that you've got um seeing your kids start to learn instruments and start to sing is was that your inspiration behind your quite new I think uh vocal warm-up academy was where did that come from can you tell us more about that yeah so okay so I'm like at home again and um like I've, I've got um, like you know, a computer and um, a little keyboard that I can um, plug in and it can do all these lovely little things. And I like I was discovering that, well, I suppose going back to for me what it was, I didn't realize the importance of warm ups like, you you know, when you're in school and you do the warm ups at the start before you start into a choir piece or something. But I didn't realize like daily warm ups is what will change your voice over time. And I just wanted to, if, if there's anyone else like that who didn't know, like I didn't know, I wanted to start something that they could, you know, if they see my journey, well, how does she do it? And like, I'm not giving lessons in, in voice at the moment or or anything yet, hopefully down the line I will. But um, I just wanted something there that if anyone else wanted to try it and, you know, do it daily and see how they how they progress that just set up a little YouTube channel and did a little bit of editing um, on my computer and put together some some vocal warm ups now that I'm still I'm, I must add to it I've got one there I, I definitely have to add um like a 10 minute a 15 minute a 20 minute warm up so uh, that's just something yeah just something small to help. That's such a lovely thing to create. That's really lovely. And it, it goes on what we were saying earlier, doesn't it? About how the voice is a muscle that you train. So putting in that time every day is going to help strengthen that muscle. So um, I'm going to write a little note and make sure that we've got that in the description. So we'll make sure we've got a link so that we can put it in the description. So any of our lovely listeners who want to check that out can make sure that they've got the link there. So I've just made a little note to make sure that's in the description and I'm gonna check it out as well because I am a huge fan of vocal warm-ups. Um, and with any warm-up that I do, it's always leading towards a vocal technique because your warm-ups, as you say, if you're doing them every day, you're strengthening the muscles that you need for singing. So the warm-ups are often the ones where you can go, hang on a minute, I do this in my warm-up, this can help me sing this part of this song, and you use it as a tool. So vocal warm-ups are important not only because you are warming up your voice so that you don't cause yourself any harm or damage, but they're also training for when you sing different songs as well. Do you have a favorite vocal warm-up that you really like? Yes, I do actually. Um, so I love there's a shoo, that type of one when you're I'm about, let's say, halfway through the warm up and I can really feel that my my um, the chords are opening up and starting to sound. And it's, it's a lovely shoo, and up and down and up and down. I love I love I just love how it resonates. <laughs> but again, yeah, it's like you you hear weird and wonderful stuff, but it's all it all does we're uh, wonderful things so I, I I love I love it yeah and yeah. again I wouldn't have known that about vocal warm-ups and knowing that <laughs> you need to keep at them yeah it's amazing like yeah I just yeah. find the world is fascinating I really really do it is it's like having a um a little gym for your voice <laughs> having your vocal warm-ups <laughs> exactly <laughs> Yeah, that's how I think of them. Anyway, they're like the little gym for the voice. Um, 
Well, I know that you have had some amazing roles that I'd really love to talk to you about. So I know that you said you obviously had the break from music, um, but it has been something that you've grown up with in your life and in your family. And so I'd love to talk about those. So in your bio that you sent over to me, you said about your roles in musicals and theatre productions. So I'm really interested now, like at what point in your life was that? And when did you do those? Yeah, so in my 20s, so I just turned ah. 40 this uh, year there in Woo. June. <laughs> Woo! <-hoo! 40 laughs> the new 30. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so in my 20s, um, again, I was finished, I was finished uh, college and was in work, full-time work. And um, a friend introduced me to uh, Trim Musical Society, which I wouldn't live too far from and got involved with them and and I was part of you know chorus and I got some leading roles and it's a real community uh come together like twice a week uh evening times all giving up your own your own time and dedication uh to work towards months and months of rehearsals to get on stage then uh for a week of shows and uh, just give back to the community and yeah oh, so much fun and learn so much and some cool cool roles that I I, I would have had there probably my favorite was um, Suki Rougemont uh, in Witches of Eastwick so again I wouldn't have known the show until it was on and but like there's three of us three witches and yeah it just ah. Oh, just we had so much fun together on stage you know some beautiful harmonies as well in the songs that are are in that show and yeah. got some great feedback gosh i love harmonies weren't you nominated for an award for that role as well I was. Ah, yeah. that's amazing <laughs> no and like again i was gobsmacked like that I, I i had that nomination so i got yeah i was nominated as best singer for uh, the it's like the Irish um, Amateur Musical Societies in Ireland. So, um, uh, like only only three in 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 Ireland in the category. So there was two categories. So I was one of the nominees in one of the categories. And yeah, it's, uh, like again, I, I didn't have my voice trained or anything at that stage. So that's just me getting up, just doing a performance, and uh, to get that recognition at that time was was fab. Wow. Yeah, that's absolutely amazing. And I can, I just see how music is so important to you when you talk about it. And it's just so lovely that you've kept it with you throughout all of your adult life. Um, and now it's come back to you at a point where you needed it most and now you're able to really pursue it. And uh, I really want to talk to you about your singles that you've released. So Omio Babino Caro being one of them and Nella Fantasia as well. Can you tell us more about this? Oh my goodness. So again, <clears throat> just with the whole, like the recovery and <clears throat> being with Deirdre, sorry, excuse me. <clears throat> I um, I I love, I love both of those, um, those pieces. And I, I like, I, instantly wanted to learn them and I worked for months like to to get them to to where they were at, at a place that I could actually sing them out and um, so they they take a lot of work and because I was starting from right back at the beginning with no vocal really training and um, they meant an awful lot to me and I just get such passion especially with uh well oh mio babino caro like and that was the first one that i put out there and and like within within a week had four and a half thousand hits on it you know on, on wow yeah so it was like oh i was like wow that is amazing for me like and i was like if 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 i put something out on on the streaming platforms perhaps that will be one and it was and again I worked from home just to make that happen all on my own with nobody else really it's like a lot of you know looking up the internet how do I do this how do I do that and um yeah just pushing through with it and I I released that in September last year and then Nella Fantasia was again for me was a message I wanted to portray a message of hope and I wanted to do it in a visual way. And that's what led me down the route of 
getting a video done with it and um, having an orchestra play on it because I really wanted it to be like a standout piece as well and something that I can always look back on and go, I made that happen. And I just had it in my head. And again, it was April before, um, before I even had Omio Babino Caro out there. I had Nella Fantasia in my head to do and uh, have, have some type of a message. And um, so I've been working on that all over last summer um, and yeah, got it to a point of ha had the track and all done and worked in with uh, Crooked Wood Studios, whom I believe you've worked as well with as well, Mary. Yeah. Yes. Yes, I have. Um, They're wonderful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, I, yeah, I got the track and then delighted with that and then went on to find um, a lovely guy, Mark Smith, and an another friend of his, Jas Foley, to come up with the concept of the music video to go alongside and then um, spent a day uh, shooting the video and put it together. And then it was like, right, how do we go about releasing this? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what a guy. Amazing reaction. And I suppose because of my story uh, with the the whole you know with surgery and all that it just it tied it all together and yeah I just again I'm just like pinching myself going did I did I do that did that happen to me you know but I believe if you really do work hard you will get what you you know believe in your mind that you can achieve you will achieve mm. it and you can totally see and hear how much hard work has gone into those songs. I'll definitely make sure that there are links in the description below. So if you want to check out Siobhan's songs, then please do go to the links in the description below. I just, I watched the Nella Fantasia video a few times. I just thought it was so beautifully done. Um, and the message in the bottle, that's your message of hope, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Is. Yeah, it really is. Like, I know, and I actually still have, that bottle with the message like I'm going to keep that forever do you know that's my I look at that now I look at it every day and um, because it's in beside me in the kitchen and yeah it's just a lovely lovely reminder of 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 that time and that message and it yeah the sort of the story behind it was trying to tell myself or give myself a message and um, where I was literally writing it to myself to almost like you will be okay and then everything turns out to be okay oh my gosh I just Oh, that me! I loved the video, but hearing you describe it like that, I, I love it even more. <laughs> I love it even more now. But your voice in that song as well, it does, it sounds so free that it soars and it soars so, it's got such a purity. It's so beautiful. I just, I can't wait to hear what you record next because I've seen some of your performances in the Songbirds concerts and I've just loved each and every one of them um, and I feel like we should talk about Songbirds because that's how I know of you is through the Songbirds and it's just such a wonderful group of singers in the CC community the classical classical crossover community um, and it's just such a supportive space with the artists and the supporters and fans that we've got. It's absolutely wonderful. Um, actually, can you tell us more about how you discovered Songbirds or how they discovered you and how your roles in the concerts came about? Absolutely, yeah. Like, um, so I got contacted by by Robert, who um, is, you know, behind Yes, us we love song. Robert. <laughs> And he contacted me one day and uh, he, he asked me, would I like to be involved? And again, I was like, me? You want me? Like, yeah. me? <laughs> so I was looking across like at, at all the, the artists that um, perform within and I was like, oh my goodness, again. And I was like, is this really happening? And I was like jumping at the chance. Um, and like, the, the, you know, the, the Ida girls, um, so th they were involved. And I had recently just been on the Ivory Sessions with Mark Cahill and I had sung um, a Queen number, but done it in a classical crossover style in Italian. Um, Who wants to live forever? She by vivra per sempre. Mm -hmm. and. Ida were also on that same week that I was on. It was all uh, like fil film musical. Well, look, I can't remember the, the full, the week of, of, of songs from, from uh, and they were on it at the, at the end as well. And I, I believe maybe that's how Robert saw me. I, I don't know, I must ask him. Um, but yeah, I 
I jumped at the opportunity and it's been, it's been brilliant because again, it's just given me, you know, just um, seeing how everybody else, you know, performs and the community again in the classical crossover and just I pinch of myself that I'm just in amongst you guys, you know, and seeing all the work that you guys do as well. So I'm just, I'm in awe of you, like, and, and, and everyone that's part of um, the group. So I, I don't, I, like, I, yeah, I just feel very lucky again. <laughs> I've got to say, I feel like that as well. It's such a wonderful group to be a part of, such a supportive group um, that I absolutely love it. And I feel like this conversation where we're going with supportive groups and songs that you sing in any sound world, it actually leads on perfectly to my next question. But my next question is actually from a member of the Mary Jess Club. So for our lovely listeners that are listening in, the Mary Jess Club is a monthly subscription club. It's like my version of Patreon, where you get access to over 14 exclusive benefits and you get to ask my wonderful Mary Jess Meets podcasts guests questions. Um, So we have some questions (laughs) from the Mary Jess Club. Um, And our lovely listeners, if you want to find out more about the Mary Jess Club, then you can find out more in the description. There is a link down there in the description. And um, it is talking about wonderful communities. It is just such an amazing community, the Mary Jess Club. It's my favourite place on the internet. And I just love these people more than I can even say. The members are so wonderful. I, I even call them my lighthouses now because they just feel like wonderful beacons to me. I just I just love them so much. Um, and they have some wonderful questions for you, Siobhan. And this one really leads on from what you were saying when you were talking about Um, doing an Italian version of Queen and and like that sounds amazing we're definitely going to link to that in the description Um, and the different songs that you've been singing and finding your your voice through the training being freed so you can reach all these high notes and everything Um, it leads on beautifully onto this first question so this member is asking who are your main music inspirations when it comes to the sound world that you're creating now it sounds like you're creating so many different sound worlds with your classical voice um, even on a pop rock song so I can't wait to hear the answer to this question <laughs> I know and I think it's a great question because again I like I I, I love all types of music like um classical pop rock jazz and I think like they're all I feel like they're all coming together so anything that I would have maybe listened to in my teens and my 20s 30s it has some sort of part to play in in how I'm sort of becoming as an artist or how I feel the music is coming out in me so like for example um Beethoven would be an artist that I would have loved when I was doing all my pieces um, for my grades and my, my yeah, for all of those. And I love the interest to your, you know, the how fast you have to play and um, that would be one. And then if I flip it, it's like Queen would be another. Love Queen. And then if I go to the likes of like Radiohead, again, I would have gone to a Radiohead concert when I was in my teens and would have loved listening to The Benz, their album. Um, Influences such as Beyonce and uh, Christina Aguilera. Um, And then there's um, in Ireland, there's an artist called, well, there's a few, (laughs) there's many artists, but in particular, I love um, at the moment, Lyra. I don't know if you've heard of Lyra, but um, you should check her out again. She, she's got a great, like a big voice and, um, but it's like, it's, it's pop stuff as well. But like, I'm drawn to looking at her as well. And I, it's like all these influences um, come to, come into my world I guess and um it's just yeah and the feeling that that the moment that you're in as well how you're feeling plays its part too so many moving cogs in 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 the wheels in my brain but I feel it's lovely because I can just draw on so many different different influences yeah absolutely that's what I love about classical crossover you feel so free to pick from all of your different influences don't you yeah yeah that's what I love about it as well so yes you 
that does make sense what you've said. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was surprised to hear Radiohead and Beyonce and Christina Aguilera in there. Um, but it's amazing where you can get such even small bits of inspiration, where you can get them from. Um, so I, I really love doing little twiddly bits with any vocals that I do. Um, that's the technical term that I use, twiddly bits. <laughs> Don't know if it's the real word. <laughs> Um, but I get that influence from Mariah Carey, from Christina Aguilera. But when you listen to my music, it doesn't sound like that. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, but that's I, where it comes from. Yeah, and, I, and I'm like, at the moment, like I'm trying to sort of work on how to get a little bit of uh, those twiddly bits. And uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just, that's like you, that's where the influences come and you just try little new techniques and try and bring them into your into your sound and see how it fits yeah absolutely all the bits that you love about music you can take them and then put them into one and in classical crossover it works because you're in that umbrella genre where you're able to take all the different bits of inspiration so that's what I love about it as well <laughs> um so our next question from the Mary Jess Club if you're happy for me to dive in is um, this member says, I really enjoy your Facebook and Instagram posts of you playing music that you're creating. Do you plan to make a CD with the new music that you're writing? Please say yes. Please say yes. <laughs> Another great question. And the answer is yes. 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 I am. I am. I am. I'm so excited because um, I'm really like trying to again the original stuff is like I feel like it just pours out in terms of the piano bits um, and it's I'm trying to as well come up with the vocal side of it so um, I'm actually working on in an original song at the moment and I plan to bring that to studio towards the end of November December to get it recorded and hopefully release in early 2022 and that will be like my first original piece um yeah but going back to like what I do on the piano I totally would love to do like a four or five track um album of just like sort of the classical style on the piano and um, again I've written I've written a couple of pieces so I'm just almost perfecting them now and uh, it's yeah get get to studio as well and and get them recorded oh my there's, gosh there's lots lots to to get busy with which is great like yeah that is so exciting and I love it I love it when people in the CC community say I'm writing my own stuff I get I get very excited when people say that <laughs> so, right. sorry go on no yeah I'm just uh, yeah, I'm like that I'm just it's it's just yeah it's just coming out of me it's like it's pouring out of me and I need to I need to go with it until it stops basically and I don't want to lose it you know that way so I'm even the bits that go up on social media I've got loads of other bits that I record and they're all on my phone and I, so I don't want to lose bits and uh, I'll bring them all together yeah so that that's I'm working yeah I'm working away in the background absolutely wow are you able to share with us the inspiration behind your song Yes. Um, so I, I like this was a weird one because I went to the piano about two weeks ago and I sat down and I just put my fingers down on the keys and I said, right, let me see what comes out. And I took a bit of inspiration from Freddie Mercury and Bohemian Rhapsody um, because I found I was singing the word mama in uh, in the first line. And then I was switching it up a little bit um, to try and, keep, and, and, and move it on a, a tad. Um, so it's, it's sort of been in my head and I go to the piano sort of almost every evening and I do a bit more and a bit more and a bit more. But really like that one was just let me sit down and see what comes out. And it, it, the inspiration, the words behind it is all to do with um, being broken hearted with your mama telling you you will be okay and then you ultimately end up as a really strong person and you you don't need this person in your life and it's it's you and yeah that's where wow. it's, that's where it's heading for oh that's amazing that's so rooted in your personal story as well going you, you know you're going to be okay that message of hope oh I can't wait to hear it already I'm excited <laughs> 
it might be very different now from what you're expecting so just be warned <laughs> now I'm even more excited now I'm very intrigued <laughs> Okay, so are we ready for, this is the last question from the Mary Jess Club now, are we ready? Okay, so this member says, what type of activities do you enjoy when you're not making music? Do you do mummy things? Are you being with your family? What other things do you do? Oh, that's lovely. I love these questions too. Um, another lovely one. Yeah, so I, I'm a mummy. Uh, number one that comes comes first so again it's it's doing your mommy jobs it's uh putting dinners on the table it's doing the normal uh, jobs around the house it's playing with the kids it's bringing them off to the playground and um, all those things as well as I love I love to do a bit of sewing so um uh yeah I I invested in a sewing machine a number of years back and I've, I've, I've made weird and weird and wonderful things for around the house. So example, curtains, um, but they're up in my kids' room now. Um, so I love to challenge myself and to do little bits and pieces. And I'm currently, a bit of uh, exclusive, exclusive news here, but I'm currently sort of putting together an outfit that will be in my next music video. Um, and I am like, it's hanging up on a, like a dressmaker's mannequin in one of the bedrooms at the moment. So I'm, I'm sewing away in the background as well, doing a lot of hand sewing and I'm making something, something from an outfit that I haven't worn in about eight or nine years and I'm adding to it, to it and embellishing it. And um, so, yeah, that's exciting. So I do that and then, um, <gasps> I, I live in the countryside, so um, as you can see, the garden at the front there, and go for walks um, down the, the, the bog, or um, <laughs> which is lovely, but you get away from everything and just you're seeing, you know, just complete and utter nothingness for, for almost looks like miles around, and then you could just go straight into a forest area. So, yeah, I just love to get out for my walks and do a little bit of skipping. Try, I'm trying to um, increase my fitness because I would have lost a lot of muscle mass and um, I'm trying to do that now as well. So yeah, just, just nor normal day-to-day -day stuff um, and just, just just trying to keep keep a happy home and, um, and seeing my family. My parents don't live too far from me and I'm, I'm, I'm the eldest out of five children. So plenty wow. of siblings there as well. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh, that's lovely. And I, I'm surprised um, that you're able to fit so much in, to be honest. It sounds like you've got more hours in a day than I've got. Because <laughs> that's so much. That's so much to be getting on with. Um, but I got I got quite excited when you said sewing. I mean, I've got to be honest. Um, because anybody who's been watching my podcast for a while now or following me on social media, they know that I do not buy any fast fashion clothes at all. Um, and I am doing a bit of sewing myself um, and trying to be more sustainable. So what you've said about taking something that you've had in your wardrobe for a really long time and then reimagining it to create it, to create it into something that you're going to use for your music. I mean, brilliant. Um, because not only are you helping the environment by doing that because you're not buying something new, um, but it's a creative outlet. It's very therapeutic when you're doing the hand sewing, I find. Um, and I just can't wait to see what you're creating because it is another way of being so creative, isn't it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, I just, I, I only recently got the um, dressmaker's mannequin to help me because I couldn't put, let's say what I'm wearing, I couldn't put it on me and start sewing. So it's like, I need something. So I'm even so excited that it's in the house. We've named it Manny, very original, but we walk past and we always say, hiya Manny. <laughs> It's, just, it's fun for the kids as well do you know but um yeah it's it is it's such a another outlet and I love I love it I have to say I really do and it's lovely just to be able to go from one to the other do you know and uh yeah tie it all up as well excuse yeah. me fun, that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> no my mannequin's called Rosie because she's got roses on her yes yes so I'm not the only mad person in the world Holly. <laughs> No, I've named my mannequin as well. I have. <laughs> I got that. That's so 
very cool that you do that. And thank you so much for answering the questions of the Merry Jess Club and our lovely listeners. If you want to find out more about the Merry Jess Club, I mean, not that I'm biased, but it is my favourite place on the internet. <laughs> then please do pop into the description below to find out more because there is a link there that you can click on that will give you lots of information for the Merry Jess Club. And thank you as well to the wonderful Merry Jess Club members for these questions. Um, so Siobhan, my last question for you is, please tell us what's next for you? I mean, you've said about recording albums potentially, um, about having this amazing recreation on your mannequin Manny that is gonna be in your video or your next creation. Um, but what is the very next project that you're really focusing on that you're gonna work hard on and make happen? Oh yeah, there's actually something coming up now for me, Mary Jess. Um, so it's on the, I have to get the date right, the 26th of September. So whether this goes out before or after, that's okay. But I'm, I'm involved in a, uh, a, a music film, uh, a short live performance film. Wow. Will, yeah, I know. I'm again, it's another pinch me moment that I've got. I've, <laughs> I, I, I'm able to do this. So um, it's going to be, it's a celebration of the autumn equinox. And um, there are performances from myself and other musicians who will take part in this uh, live performance film. And it's going to be aired on that Saturday at 7 p.m. Um, on the 26th of September. And it also features within a, a festival that's taking place on the same day. Uh, so the, the festival is local, actually. It's not too far from where I live in Dunderry Park, if anyone wants to check it out. And um, that will have live performances on the day. There's six live performances over four hours. And then this film will feature in it as well. So that, like, like I cannot believe I'm doing this. Like, I, I really can't. You know? <laughs> um, so, like, yeah, that's going to go out. And it, there's just, it's it's everyone is we're all sort of getting word out there now and it's on my social media pages so yeah it's really exciting What's oh next? great so for me and all of our lovely listeners who are bound to want to find out more about that I mean I'm intrigued and excited um where can I find it so I go to your social media pages and click on a link or where where can I go yeah, I have the links all pinned to the top of all my <laughs> social media. So you will find it there and you'll find information about it. So there's there's links you can um, actually, it's with Soft Productions. If you wanted to Google Soft Productions, um, they are putting it on and you can actually follow a link on their website and put your interest in there to see the actual performance um, film it's free to watch and um, it'll be premiered that evening and it will be I'm sure available after that and for the live event if you're in if you're in County Meath on that same evening uh, tickets are on sale for that as well oh my gosh that sounds amazing well all of your social media links will be in the description so everybody who's listening make sure you check those out I'm going to check them out too because I can't wait to see that and Siobhan thank you so much for giving us so much of your time here on the Mary Jess Meets podcast. Will you stop I've absolutely, absolutely thoroughly enjoyed chatting with you Mary Jess thank you for everything and thank you for all those beautiful questions as well from your members in your in the Mary Jess club and congratulations to you too as well on your recent uh, single that came out um lighthouse of mine it's amazing and yeah well done well done to you too and thank you for having thank me you. gosh thank you so much I, that's really lovely of you to say that i'm so chuffed with lighthouse of mine and that is that the mary jess club members helped me from the very beginning with that recreation of that song and they are my lighthouses so thank you so much for those lovely words and Thank you for sharing your incredibly inspiring and brave story with us. That's just, it's really blown my mind, actually, all the amazing things that you've had to, all the tough things that you've had to deal with and all the amazing things that you've managed to achieve through it all. So thank you so much for being so open and honest with us. When you've got your CDs and things coming out, will you come back on the Mary Jess Meets podcast to update us, please? Absolutely. I would love to do it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> okay brilliant I will look forward to that I will really look forward to it and thank you so much again Siobhan for coming and joining us thank you so much Mary Jess take care you too thank you bye, bye.